Happy Wednesday. Thank you for taking the time to watch this pre-recorded video. I'm sorry that we didn't get to have a live session, but don't worry, we'll be back to our lives on Friday. And I'll get to um, see some of your faces if you choose to use the video option, and if not, I'll get to interact with you guys on chat. So this video is going to cover the topics that were in your OMHS assignments 1.05 and 1.06. Now before we get into the actual lesson, I want to go over a few reminders and a few things that um, I've gotten some emails about to help clarify how we need to be completing our work. So here we have a list of all of our assignments that have been on both OMHS and IXL. Now, these ones that are in the brown screen that are past due, 1.02 and 1.03. For those of you that have been with us for several weeks, you know that you had two weeks to work on these, one an extra week because OMA just crashed. So hopefully, those of you that have been with us from the beginning have completed both of these assignments. Now, if this is your first week at K-12 Floss, please don't worry. Know that both of these assignments are ones that I encourage you to do, but if you don't have time to get those done because you're new and you're trying to learn everything, you can just forget about those. Don't sweat it, okay? But the work in this blue box here, this week's assignments, these ones are really important because these are the first weeks that are gonna act first assignments that are going to actually go in the gradebook, okay? So you'll actually get graded for doing this work. And that is OMHS assignments 1.05, 106, and 107, and then three IXL assignments. Now, let's clarify the order of which we should do our work, because on that newsletter, you have the lessons, the OMHS, and the IXL. And all of it's important but the order of which you do it is really important. And that is your OMHS needs to be done first. That's because your OMHS work, those are your lessons. That's your actual instruction, okay? That asynchronous work is where you're gonna learn all the ins and outs of all of this material. So that needs to be done before the corresponding live lessons because where I come in is I come in as a support for all of that. So I am following up and I'm gonna be talking about some of the things that you should have already watched in OMHS. Also, by doing your OMHS lessons first, you'll know what parts are confusing to you, what parts you're like, that didn't quite make sense. So then I'll be available for you to ask questions or maybe I'll already know that that's a tricky part and so I'll have something planned to help clarify for everyone. So OMHS is done first. Then IXL comes second, or it could come third. IXL and the live lessons, those can be intertwined, okay? Those two come after OMHS, because the IXL is where you're going to practice everything. That's where you're gonna take what you learned in OMHS, and what you got extra practice on with me and practice yourself, okay? So if you guys have already started on IXL, don't sweat it, but I would take a pause if you haven't done your OMHS first. All right, now further to talk about IXL. I had some questions and as we did our live session, I realized that my rubric wasn't very clear. So I have revised it and I've updated it on OMHS as well. So that first column here has your SMART score. So your SMART score, you get to choose when you stop. So you get to decide what's going to go in that grade book. So if you stop practicing when your SMART score is between a 60 and a 69, then when I go to grade it, you're going to get three points out of five. So that's going to equal a 60% D. But as we all know, we always want to have a C or higher. We want to strive for more points. We want to strive for that mastery. So if you get to a 70 to 79 SMART score, and that's where you stop, that means when I grade it, you're going to get four points, which is an 80% B. That's a really good grade. That's acceptable. If you want to strive higher than that, and your SMART score is between an 80 and 89, and that's where you stop, 
then you'll get five points. So that's a perfect score, 100% A. Maybe you want to go even beyond that. If your SMART score is a 90 or above, you'll get six points. So that means you get one extra credit point. So your score will be 120% because you'll get five points for 100 plus one bonus. Hopefully, these past two slides helped clarify a few things. But if you guys still have questions, um, don't feel like you're bothering me. Send me an email. I'll keep trying to clarify via email and also when we meet in our sessions. Okay? All right, let's transition over and start the lesson. So this live session, or in this case, pre-recorded session, is going to be on 105 and 106. So as we talked about a second ago, if you have not completed this in OMHS, you need to stop the video, go back and complete those, and then watch this, okay? One more time. If you have not done OMHS 105 and 106, stop this video, complete those, then come back and watch this. All right. So our learning target for today is that by the end of this, you can use properties of positive, zero, and negative exponents to simplify expressions. All right, let's go over our vocab, because in order for us to talk about exponents, we need to know what each of these are called. So that way, when I'm going through this lesson, when you're having your practice on IXL, you understand the vocabulary being used. So this four right here, what is that four called? Ah, that's the exponent. So that superscript, so that means it's raised up, that smaller number is called an exponent. How about the 2? What do we call that? That is the base. So the base is our larger number, and then the superscript is our exponent. What about it as a whole? What do we call this expression together when we have 2 to the 4th power? We call it a power. Kind of used the word when I was pronouncing it. All right. I, if you guys don't have paper with you already, pause this video and either get a notebook that you can designate to math or get a folder with loose leaf paper. And please take a moment and jot down this diagram in this notes because then you'll have your vocab. So that way, if you're ever working on something, you can refer back to it to make sure you understand the vocabulary words being used. All right, we're going to start with positive exponents. So the exponent of a power indicates how many times the base is multiplied by itself. So here we have our definition written out with variables, so that way it applies to everything. So if we have a, which is our base, raised to the m exponent, that means a is being multiplied by itself that many times. So this, this is great. And since you guys have seen exponents since fifth or sixth grade, it probably looks familiar. But let's go over an example with numbers because sometimes we just need a real life example. Otherwise, it's really confusing. So let's take that two to the fourth power we were talking about a moment ago. So two to the fourth power, our base, our two, is being multiplied by itself how many times? four times, because that's what the exponent tells us, that it's two multiplied by itself four times. All right, take a brief moment and, and calculate what this would be. So what is two times two times two times two? 16. All right, you guys ready for some bonus vocab here? Let's go over what each one of these forms is called. So when it's just written as two to the fourth, that's exponential four, because it's written with an exponent. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. How about when we write it out as two times itself one time? That's called expanded form, because we expanded it. That makes sense. And last but not least, when we simplify it completely, what is that form called? Standard form. That's another set of vocab that you should add to your notebook. And because this is recorded, you guys can always rewind it and pause it to take those notes as needed. Okay? 
we're going to do some practice here, just like I encouraged you guys to pause the video and take notes. As I ask these questions, if you don't have enough time to answer before I reveal the answer, pause the video. Because by you participating along with me, even though we're not live, by you thinking of the answers, you're going to remember it more and you're going to learn it and have a better time. Okay? So this statement right here, the standard form of 5 to the second power is 25. Is that true or false? Yeah, that's true. That is a correct statement. Now, what if I was having an off day and I said the answer was false? And I said the answer was false because I thought that 5 squared was really equal to 10. What error did I make? Oh, I didn't follow the rules. Instead of doing 5 times itself 2 times, so 5 times 5, I did 5 times 2. In 10, is very different than 25. And if we put that in perspective of money, $10 versus 25, well, I'd want the $25, because that's more. So we have to remember that it's not five, that it's not the base times the exponent. The exponent tells you how many times to multiply the base by itself. So five times five is 25. Let's try this one. Evaluate this expression, four squared. 16, because 4 times 4 is 16. Good. Hopefully you guys got that one right. All right, which expression is equivalent 2 to the 5th? This one you'll probably have to pause to work out. What is 2 times itself 5 times? 32. Very good. And if you didn't quite get that, that's fine. Take a pause, rewatch. Go back to the OMHS lessons, okay? All right, zero exponents. This may be a little newer for you guys, okay? So any base powered by a zero exponent equals one, okay? That is true of anything. So any number, so A, anything to the power of zero will always be one. So if I had 5 to the 0 power, that's going to be 1. If I had 176 to the 0 power, what's it going to be? No, 1 again. If I had a million to the 0 power, it'd still be 1. All right, how about this question? What is the simplified form of 12 to the 0 power? If we follow our rule, it is 1. Now, what's the simplified form of 9 to the first power? Hmm. That would be 9. All right? So, if you guys didn't catch this in your lessons, if you have a number that you don't see an exponent with, it technically has an exponent of 1. Because 9 times itself one time is just going to be 9. So it's important to note that these result in two very different answers, a zero exponent compared to an exponent of a 1. All right, what would be the value of this expression then? 10 to the 0 power. Yep, 1 again. Anything raised to the power of 0 is 1. Ooh, how about this one? This will be one that you guys probably need to pause and then play to see if you got the right answer. So simplify the expression 9 to the 0 plus 100 to the 0 plus 1 half to the 0. All right, if we break this down, well, 9 to the 0 is 1 plus 100 to the 0 is 1 plus 1 half to the 0 is 1. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. So a problem that looked really long and kind of tricky only took a few seconds to solve because the 0 power is my favorite because it just makes it 1. All right, negative 
exponents. So if the base is powered by a negative exponent, we take the, by taking the reciprocal, it changes the sign of the exponent. Let's do a timeout here. Vocab check. Reciprocal. What does that mean again? Reciprocal is when you flip your fraction. So the numerator goes to becomes the denominator, the denominator becomes the numerator. So if you guys didn't remember that word, add that to your notes. Remember that reciprocal is when you flip your fraction. So here we have two examples. So if we have a to the negative m, we have a negative exponent and we're not allowed to leave our answers. And it's not simplified if we have a negative exponent. We always need them to be positive. I can make, I can change the sign by putting it and taking the reciprocal. So it goes down to the bottom. It went from negative to positive. Same is true if I start off and I have a negative exponent that's in my denominator. By taking the reciprocal, moving it up to the numerator, it changes the sign and I have a positive exponent. And we want positive exponents, we want to be happy. We don't want to be sad and depressed. They've gotten the help they need, they're good to go. All right, just like before, let's take a look at this with actual numbers. So if I have six to the exponent of negative two, well that six is currently not a fraction. So maybe when I went over that last one, you're like, Miss Nailstop, it's not a fraction. How can you take the reciprocal? Well, remember that you can make and rewrite any whole number as a fraction by making the denominator one. Because if you divide something by one, does it change it at all? No. Six divided by one is six. Seven divided by one is seven. A hundred divided by one is a hundred. So you can change any whole number into a fraction, and we write it as a fraction by making the denominator one. So by doing that, I then can take the reciprocal, and therefore six squared is in the denominator. I have a positive exponent. We are good to go. All right, if it already is a fraction, and my negative exponent is in the denominator, when I move it to the numerator, I don't have to leave, I don't have to keep it with one underneath. I can simplify it and keep it as just four to the third. Now, if this negative exponent thing was a little tricky for you, because this, this is the trickiest part. Hang on with me, we're gonna have some examples and then I have a fun little extra video at the end that you guys can watch if the negative exponent thing is not quite clicking on why it is that you can take the reciprocal and change the sign. But let's do some practice first, okay? So which expression is equivalent to five to the negative third power? Well, I know I need to take the reciprocal, so that means it's going to be in the denominator, so it has to either be B or C. And then when I take the reciprocal, the sign changes. So in C, the sign didn't change, but in B it did. So it must be B. Yep, winner. All right, try this one. If, all right, if you guys didn't try that last one on your own, take a pause and see if you can figure this one out. All right, with this one, there we go. It would be A, seven to the fifth. Why wouldn't it be B? Because that one has a positive exponent. Oh, because we didn't take the reciprocal. We just took our eraser and erased the negative. We can't just change things how we want. We have to have a mathematical reason. We flipped it, took the reciprocal, good to go. All right, which expression is equivalent to 1 over 25? Ooh, a challenge. Is it A, B, both A and B? Or am I really tricking you and it's neither A or B? So pause the video and see if you can figure this one out. 
it is both A and B. Now why is that? Well, if we look at A here, we know that when we simplify, we can't have negative exponents in our final answer. So by taking the reciprocal, we would rewrite A to be B. So those are both equivalent, they're the same. One is simplified, one is not. Well, can we simplify that further if we were asked? Yeah, because what is five squared? 25, which brings us back to the original question. So all three of these expressions are equivalent. We just went from not very simplified to as simplified as you can get. All right, this right here is the video that I was talking about. If you guys have any questions on why the zero and negative exponents work, this is the video to watch. It's a short video. This video will take the place of your small group time, okay? So it is right here, which obviously you can't click on the link, so I will make sure to include this in the announcements. So go to that, select that link, and watch this video to help you understand why the zero and negative exponent properties work. All right, that is the end of this lesson, guys. Now that you have finished this, the rest of your day should be working on IXL practice and going ahead, and I encourage you to do OMHS lesson 107, so that way it is done well before Friday when I will see you for our final live session. Before we sign off, if you guys followed instructions and you made it through this whole lesson, I want you to send me an email and give me the secret code word, which is applesauce. And if you do that, you'll get a bonus point. So if you made it through this whole lesson and you followed directions, you guys participated, send me an email with the secret code word applesauce, and you'll get a bonus point. All right, see you guys Friday.